to D.C., Jacob Smith versus Megan Wenzel, Attorney Magnif for Plaintiff and Pays No Poor Defendant. Good morning to everyone. Court will note that this matter is before the court today for the uh, commencement of the trial and as well as the evidentiary hearing on the defendant's motion for denial of parenting time. I'll ask uh, Ms. McNiff, are you ready to proceed? We are, Your Honor. Okay. And Ms. Paisno, are you ready to proceed? We are, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. McNiff, do you wish to make any uh, opening statement or proceed to your proofs? Um, we will waive opening statements and proceed to proofs, but we do have a couple of uh, evidentiary stipulations to put on the record. Oh, okay. That's fine. With that, uh, Ms. McNiff has uh, agreed to waive opening statement and proceed to proofs. Ms. Paisno, do you wish to make an opening statement, reserve your opening statement, or waive your opening statement? Your Honor, I'll waive my opening statement. Okay. Thank you. Ms. McNiff, you can proceed and call your first witness. I call Clint McNiff, Marler. you can proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Marler, where do you work? Uh, Canadian National Railroad. And how long have you been there? Uh, May of 2005, I hired on. What's your position? I am manager of engineering for the Michigan Zone. Do you know Jacob Smith? I do. And how do you know him? Uh, he's worked for me since 2018, I believe. Okay. Did you know him before he worked for you? I did not. And what is his position for you? Uh, he's held multiples. Uh, he was track inspector, foreman. Uh, currently, as of the last two years, he does not work directly for me. Um, I am. I moved up about two years ago in my company. So I went from supervisor to manager. So his direct report right now is Benjamin Quadra. Do you still have any contact with him? I do. Yes. And what kind of um, what kind of an employee is Jacob? Uh, he's been nothing but uh, on time, uh, a go-getter, guy you can count on. Uh, I have currently 177 employees under me, and he's one of my most respected employees. Is he a leader at work? Absolutely. Has he ever had any injuries on the job? No, ma'am. <clears throat> um, has he ever had any injuries for the people under him? No, ma'am. Has he had any project failures? None at all. Since you've known him, has he had any discipline action at work? Zero. Is he ever late? Never under my control, no. Um, is he on call? He is. How often is he on call? 24-7. And how often do your employees generally get called in when they aren't scheduled to work and they're on call? Uh, it varies a lot by time of year, uh, winter time, uh, it may be more frequent than summertime with the snow and the pending weather. Um, as an inspector, it might be a couple times a month, maybe a few more. It, it's all emergency call out. So it really depends on when the emergency happens. Um, does the railroad perform any uh, random drug and alcohol tests on your employees? That is correct. Uh, about how often does that happen? Uh, once again, that's random. Uh, that's based on the FRA guidelines, the Federal Railroad Administration. Uh, so all the testing is uh, completely random, given to the company for what employees we have to test. Uh, myself, I do what we call Rule G testing. And what Rule G testing is, I show up to a... Uh, group, and I have to get close to the employees and ensure I don't see any signs of intoxicants or uh, smell any alcohol or anything like that. To your knowledge, has Jacob ever had a positive test? He has not. And do you have any idea when his most recent test was? And, and you may not since you haven't been supervising him. Yeah, I don't remember recently. I know he's been tested uh, while he was my direct report. Uh, but yeah, we have a zero tolerance at CN. Uh, any sort of positive, you're no longer employed with CN. So 100% accuracy has never failed a test. So would you have to be a zero, zero, zero on an alcohol test? That's correct. Yes. Even like zero, zero, one would be enough to trigger it? That's correct. Um, do you know if Jacob's ever worked one more than one position at a time? Yes. While he worked for me, we were shorthanded uh, when he was uh, uh, in Schoolcraft, Michigan. Uh, he would actually do the inspector job for me 
and run the crew for me. Uh, he's always been a leader and a guy I can count on to do that. And um, never did he complain. Never did he uh, say it was too much. Um, he's helped me out of a lot of jams in this company uh, by being the guy he is. Do you know if uh, Jacob received any funds for back pay in 2023? I don't personally know that, but I know the company did have to do back pay payments did, uh, to employees. So did a lot of employees receive back pay? Yes. Do you know what period of time the back pay was for? I do not. Okay. Do you, do you know why there was a back pay? Uh, it was the union. Uh, so their contract had run out. And so when a contract runs out, um, they retro pay for the raises they would have received. Okay. So it's raises going back for a certain period of time. Correct. And so that's, that's not a bonus. No, no, not a bonus. Do you know if Jacob receives bonuses? That's my knowledge. No, that's management receives a bonus. And I, I know that railroad overtime uh, structure can be a little bit different than other companies. Can you explain how that's computed? As far as, I just want to understand the question a little more. If, if somebody works overtime, do they get paid more? Yes. And, and Yeah. So, okay. Okay. I understand. So railroad structure is you have eight hours regular time. Any time over that becomes time and a half for a period up to eight hours after your original eight hours. If you exceed 16 hours, it goes double time, which means you're paid double your regular salary. And and, and at double time is the most that you would receive for anything over and above yes. 16 hours. Thank you. Have you ever been aware of Jacob sleeping in his vehicle after a long shift? Yes. And is that permitted? Absolutely. And so there's, there's times we ask these employees to work up to 36 hours and things like that. The safety of my employees is my number one responsibility. Uh, if I have an employee that has put in long, longer than 24 hours, I'll actually ask them, hey, can you please get some rest or I'll get you a hotel room. A lot of his territory does not have hotel rooms right nearby sometimes. Uh, um, so they'll actually communicate with me and say, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a nap in the truck, uh, make sure I get some rest before I drive. And, and that, that's a normal thing to do? Yes. Have you ever known Jacob to be dishonest? No. What's your experience with his integrity? Uh, it's stellar. Uh, you know, if, if he made a bad decision, not necessarily a bad job or anything like that, or made a bad decision, uh, it wasn't something I had to find out or discover. It was something he would call me and say, here's, here's what I did. Uh, and we would talk through it. Uh, we've had prior instances where other employees had gotten in trouble. And um, Jake is one I can go to get a statement from. And it's been honest, even when it's difficult to be honest, he's been honest. Do you ever talk about your private lives? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Did you um, ever talk to Jake about, about non-work topics, like about his family? Uh, the big thing we talked about uh, a few years back, uh, he was extremely excited about Meg was his wife. And, uh, you know, when she was pregnant, there was a glow on him. Uh, you really couldn't get him to stop talking about it. But I welcomed it. We talked about, you know, being fathers, uh, things of that nature. Did he uh, talk about his engagement to Meg? Uh, I know he told me when he had gotten, you know, engaged. Uh, I was going through a divorce at that time. So <laughs> marriage wasn't the best topic for me at the time. Gotcha. Have you heard him talk about his kids? Absolutely. And how does he how does he talk about his kids? Prideful. It's always prideful, uh, smiling, glowing. Uh, I have an 11 year old daughter. We kind of talk about stories of the kids, you know, nothing too in depth. Everything's kind of business. We're in passing. Sure. Uh, so it's not like we've sat down and, you know, after hours and talked about things, it's always been at work. Do you ever talk here? Uh, the, the people who uh, work for you discuss going out, drinking, going to bars, things like that. I have people that do that. Uh, I could tell you that. Uh, Mr. Smith is not one of those that I have to be concerned with. Uh, I do have employees that um, aren't up to the standard of him. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Has he ever bragged to you about being out drinking or being at a bar? No, ma'am. 
have you, has he ever declined to come in for work because he indicated that he'd been drinking and wasn't able to come in? Like when he was on? No, no ma'am. Have you ever seen him at work when he appeared to be hungover? Absolutely not. Have you ever seen him at work when you thought that he was in a uh, condition that he couldn't perform his job duties? The only time I would say that is after he'd put in about 36 hours or so and, and we asked him to sleep in the truck. And how often would he take the on-call uh, calls? If I were to put a percentage on it, I'd say somewhere in the 80 percent. Uh, normally, I would call him, and this could be any time of day or night, uh, one in the morning, whatever the case may be. Uh, and normally his response is, you know, let me talk with my wife or I got to make sure I have someone for my kid you know, before I come in, things of that nature. Uh, that's really the only reason he's ever given me that he can't come in that I can recall. Is there anything that you've seen about uh, Jacob on the job or talking with him that would give you a concern about his ability to take care of his kids? No, ma'am. Thank you. I have no further questions. Okay. Ms. Pays, no, any cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Marler, you indicated you haven't seen or worked with Mr. Smith in the last two years. Is that correct? Uh, no, ma'am. I am not his direct boss over the last two years. Uh, I have seen him multiple times. I've seen him this week, actually, on the job. Okay. Do you work side by side with him or you just happen to be at the same job location? Uh, my job is to look over the crews. So I'll go to his job sites or his office, his place of meeting in the morning. Yep. Okay. How long do you spend with him when you're there? Uh, normally it's about an hour. Uh, there's times where I do ride alongs and I will spend a full eight hours. Um, so it varies day to day. Okay. Now, you indicated that Mr. Smith was willing to come in anytime he was on call. Were you aware that he had Meg at home to take care of the children at that point in time? I don't ask about their family situation when I'm calling. Normally, we're in a, an emergency. Okay. Uh, the only times that, like I said, he's really turned down a call was, you know, hey, let me talk with my wife and make sure everything's good. Are you aware they're not married or never been married? Uh, no. Okay. I'm just curious, could you keep calling him his wife? But these parties have never that's, been married. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's how he referred to. Okay. And when you said, how often can someone be gone up to 36 hours or 24 to 36 hours? It really depends. So over the last two years, the company has tried to limit that possibility by planning and structuring so we get some replacement. But prior to that, it happened multiple times in the year that we would do that. Okay. Was, and I just want to clarify this. You said that um, Jake was available most for 80% of the time on call. Does that include he was available how often for overtime if the company needed it? When he was an inspector, he was highly uh, susceptible to overtime and, and he would be available for it. Okay. Now, you in, can you clarify again to me what his current role is? Uh, currently, like I said, he's not working directly. I know he's an inspector and then he got bumped out of that job. Uh, I believe he's a trackman at the moment. I'm not positive. Like I said, not directly for him. I watched that 170 employees I have, but he, uh, he was an inspector up until just about a month or so ago. He got bumped. Okay. Does that company get bumped or can somebody choose to be bumped from that position? No, they do not get choose bumped. Uh, seniority based on the railroad. Okay. So someone when... with higher seniority can bump. Them. Okay. And can that change job to job or how often can that role change? Uh, can you rephrase that? Or I, So you just said he was bumped a month ago. So it means I'm assuming somebody with more seniority came in to be the inspector. Does that change by job? Can it change from job to job or is it just for periods of time? Well, once you're bumped, your seniority allows you to bump into another job. Uh, so like he was an inspector for quite some time on the South Bend sub and then Someone else normally gets bumped, giving them an opportunity to bump somebody. So it, they could be in that position for years or, you know, a day. It depends on. So to clarify, did Jake get bumped up or bumped down? Uh, he got bumped out. Uh, okay. Inspector is about the highest position uh, in the union ranks. So he definitely got bumped down from that. Okay. In the railroad, is there a way you guys bid jobs or is he just solely in one location for a period of time? No, we have a bid process. Uh, every Tuesday, we have awards that come out. Uh, so you have to either text, email, or send a fax uh, to our staff coordinator. 
and you bid on a job, uh, if something's open that you want, and if you're the highest seniority employee that bid it with the rights for that position, then you'd be awarded it. What's a typical schedule for for bidding a job? You said it's every Tuesday, but like, does it switch days of the week? Does it switch hours or does it depend on the job? Uh, depends on the job. The majority of our jobs are eight hours straight uh, jobs out here. Uh, there's some 410 jobs and in the winter time we do run night gangs. And what's a night gang? So night gang is basically a snow coverage gang in our major terminals. Uh, they would work from like 11 o'clock at night till uh, seven in the morning. Okay. Now when someone bids a job, just to clarify this every Tuesday, it could change your hourly rate depending on what job you bid or does it just yes. depend on? Okay. And that's depending on seniority, right? That's correct. Okay. Now you indicated that CN or the railroad, the federal railroad um, requires testing for alcohol and drugs, but you don't know how many tests in the last, you said Jake recently had a test. No, I said, I do rule G, which is our drug and alcohol test. And that's something I have to do daily with my employees. Uh, but then as far as the federally regulated tests, uh, those are random given to us from the federal government on who to test and when. Okay. And now, I do not recall his last one. Okay. Now, do you, are those PBT tests or breathalyzer tests or those urine screens? Both. At the same time or just depend on what? Um, same time. Okay. Yeah, he's never had a uh, uh, reasonable cause test by the company. With the reasonable cause test that they suspected that he was using at the time? Correct. Okay. An incident or susp suspicion of uh, use. Okay. Do you know the names of Jake's children? I do not. Okay. I have no further he questions. He said them. I don't remember I, them. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Ms. McNiff, any uh, redirect? Um, just briefly, when somebody is on call, are they required to come in? No. I have no further questions. Okay. Anything else, Ms. Paisna? Ms. Paisna? Yeah, I have no questions, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Mr. Marler, uh, that concludes your testimony. Thank you, sir. You're free to go. Have a good day. I Thank you, sir. Next witness, Ms. McNiff. Um, it, do you see Ms. Lutz in the waiting room? Not yet, no. Okay, then let's call Albert Eden, Edens. Go ahead, Ms. McNiff. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Edens, uh, where do you work? Uh, I work at Canadian National Railroad. And what do you do there? Um, I'm a track inspector. How long have you been there? Um, approximately six and a half to seven years. Do you know Jacob Smith? I do. And And how do you know him? Well, I knew of him in high school. He was a couple years older than me. I didn't really know him. And then uh, when he hired him at the railroad, he hired him at my location in Battle Creek. And do you know what uh, Jake's current job is? I believe he's an assistant foreman. Okay. And have you worked uh, with with Jacob? Yes, multiple times. And, and I currently work out of the same location. Okay. And can you tell me what his work ethic is like? Oh, he's been a phenomenal worker. Uh, dedication. Um, getting the job done right. Uh, he looks out for everybody around him. Safety's big with him. Is he on the union board? He is. How did he become a member of a union board? Um, I nominated him at our last uh, nomination meeting. And and why did you nominate him? Because of his dedication, not only to work, but his family, uh, his military background. You know, he's able, I've seen on a day-to-day -day basis, he's able to uh, kind of bridge the gap between union and management, try to build a better relationship with the guys. Was he present at the meeting when you nominated him? He was not. Is that common to nominate somebody who's not present? Not usually, but with seeing him, how he is with people, his knowledge of the contract, um, how he doesn't lose his temper, he can actually have a talk with management and actually try to bridge issues. And it was something that I wanted to nominate into the union to try to help our members. Does he engage in any mediation between the union and management? Yes. Uh, is he effective as, as a mediator? He is. How would you describe his communication skills? Uh, he's able to, I guess I would use with management, when they're using bigger words and a lot of members wouldn't understand that, he's able to talk to them on a basis that they would understand. And the same thing goes with management. He's able to take the concerns of the members and put it in the words that management understands. Do you believe that he's fair? Oh, he is. Have you ever seen him with his children? I have. Uh, our Go ahead. Okay. Oh, you just muted yourself. Our kids play the same location. And where's that location? 
uh, Waddles Park Men's Club. And how how often do you see them there? Uh, I've seen them, I think, last season at least four or five times. They're not always on the same days, so but at least four or five times there. Okay. And what do you see doing him doing with the kids? Ooh, I've seen him everything from getting the stroller out of the vehicle to uh, he every time I've seen him, he was pushing the stroller, engaging with the kids during the games. Um, seemed like a really good father. Were his kids, uh, was his older child playing in the games? Yes. And did you ever see uh, Ms. Wenzel with him? Yes. And of the two parents, were, were they both engaged with the kids in a similar matter, manner? I think it was more him engaging with the kid, but she was engaged, like, watching the game. And... Okay. And did he appear to take care of the children? Oh, yeah. When you have um, meetings for the union, do you ever have alcohol and food, things like that? Every time we have a union meeting. And do you recall um, Mr. Smith being at a, at a union meeting when he and Ms. Wenzel were still together? Yes, I do. Do you recall whether or not he was drinking any alcohol? Not alcohol. He drank Coke. And generally, have you seen him drink alcohol when there's a union meeting? I have never seen him drink alcohol. Do you recall at that last meeting when he was still with Ms. Wenzel, whether or not he uh, he stayed long at that meeting? No, I believe she had called him and he had to leave early. Was he able to eat his food before he left? No, but uh, there was a member that took him his food. Okay. And so she she called and he left yes have you um do you ever hear the men at work talking about like going to the to the bars getting drunk things like that oh, oh yeah is is that common with your co-workers it is have you ever heard mr smith tell stories about going to bars and getting drunk no have you ever seen him when he appeared to be hung over at work uh, never have you ever had any concerns about uh jacob's drinking habits not at all do you, from what you've observed from him with his children and at work, do you have any concerns about his ability to take care of his children? Not at all. He seems like a great father. Thank you. I have no further questions. Okay. Ms. Peso? Thank you. Mr. Edens, can you tell me a little bit, how often do you see Mr. Smith at work? Now it's probably, so I just bumped into the track inspector on South Bend. Um, I want to say the end of... This is May, so end of March, beginning of April. So now I see him on a three to four day basis minimum. And prior to that, how often were you seeing him at work? Um, it kind of depends. I worked in Battle Creek, so if I ever had to go to Schoolcraft or we had to ever communicate with him, which was quite a bit, um, I would see him. But I'd say maybe once a month. So prior to your, your new bump up, you were only seeing him about once a month? possibly and that i mean that goes for not like once a month for last year but i'd say once a month since i last bumped down there so in the last year okay and in regards to that are there other co-workers that besides you that see him on a more frequent basis yeah okay because there, are you aware of anybody that works with him on a daily basis yeah The way you guys run your bids and um, work, do groups stay together? No. Or they... Well, I guess you kind of would have to clarify that. Are there, is it an individual bid or is like if he's a supervisor, assistant supervisor or somebody, does he have a crew underneath him that travels when he goes to a different job site? No. Okay. So it's more individual. It's a, completely individual. Okay. Now, you indicated that you saw mr smith at waddles park last season was that in the fall or spring of 2023 i would say it'd be the fall the i believe the season starts in june or july so around that time of, 2020, of 2023 or 2022 it might have been i think it was 2023 so you saw him four to five times in the season of that started in july of 2023 Yes. What sport was it? Uh, baseball. They were on soccer at the same time, too, so I believe it was baseball, though. Do you know what kid was playing baseball? No, I do not. I know he had his baby in the stroller and then the other kid with them. And then was there a third kid playing the sport, or was there... Which kid was playing the sport? I'm confused. The I believe it's her child. I don't know. It's the older kid. Okay. But she was present all four or five times that you saw Mr. Smith at this event? Correct.
Now you indicated you did not see Mr. Smith drinking at a union meeting. Do most people drink at the union meet drink alcohol at the union meeting? I'd say about three quarters of them. Do you find that people that are higher up in like management or going to be on a union board don't drink? I mean, you would have to, uh, I don't know how to take that. Like, let me rephrase my question for you. If somebody's more respected and higher in the, I'll say in seniority, are they less likely to drink at a meeting like that? I mean, no. Okay. One second. Is it Honor. pretty much, I'll say Canadian nationals culture that everyone drinks? I wouldn't say it's their culture. There's a lot of people that we work with that don't drink. But, you know, the guys that go out and, like, there's a group of guys that go out on, like, Thursday or Friday uh, and have drinks. And it's usually the same group that times every time. When you saw Mr. Smith at these these baseball games in the summer of 2023, did you approach and talk to him or did you just see him from a distance? I know at least two times I did because uh, I was the inspector in Battle Creek and I was having to do heat patrols and I was talking to him and seeing if he had to do heat patrols the same day down there. Okay. Have you ever been to Mr. Smith's home? Uh, recently when I got the work truck, but that's it. Okay. You had to take him a work truck or you? I had to pick up the one. I'm the one. I bumped him out of the job in uh, South Bend as a track inspector. Okay. So then you got the work truck? Yes. Okay. Were his kids presents present that day? No, I we left work. Uh, well, no, I showed up in the morning time. He took me down to... Uh, schoolcraft we worked our full day and then on our way back i basically followed him in the work truck and uh or the my vehicle was at his house it was kind of a swap i rode with him we went back to his house after work drove to my house drop off uh my personal vehicle dropped him back off so no kids were present i have no further questions your honor miss mcniff any uh redirect uh briefly are our management uh members allowed at the union meetings no ma'am so do you recall if it was baseball or t-ball? It could have been both. I kind of combined them, t-ball, baseball. There's like three levels there. Do you and uh, Jacob have any any other co-workers who are also on the union board? Yes, there's multiple people on the union board. Um, but do you have anybody who, who you, you, you both work closely with who are on the union board? I wouldn't say he works closely with. We have somebody that is close to our territory, uh, our secretary treasurer, but uh, that's about it. Okay. I, I have no further questions. Okay. Ms. Pace, know anything else? I have nothing further, Your Honor. Mr. Eden, uh, that concludes your testimony. Thank you, sir. You're free to go. Have a good day. All right, thank you, Your Honor. Ms. McNiff, uh, next witness. Um, Who do we have in the waiting room? I have an Amy Clark. No sign of uh, Lutz yet. Okay, then we'll call Ms. Amy Clark. McNiff, you can proceed. Thank you. Um, Ms. Clark, where do you live? I live in Battle Creek and I'm at Township. Okay. And do you work? I uh, Yes, I do. Where do you work? I work at Oakland Hospital. And what do you do there? I work in human resources. I'm a benefits manager. And do you know the parties? Yes. How do you know them? So I know Jacob. Um, I'm his aunt. Um, I'm a, I also consider him a friend and we volunteer together. Okay. And do you know Ms. Wenzel? Um, yeah, I feel like I'm an acquaintance of her, yes. Okay. And have you had the opportunity to see uh, Jacob with his children? Yes, I have. How often do you see him with his children? So I see Jacob with his children um, two to three times a week. Okay. In, in what kind of context? So um, I have grandchildren. And so um, I take uh, my grandchildren, specifically my youngest one, to play with his boys. And um, we coach soccer together. So I see him with his boys at soccer. And what, what kinds of things have you seen him do with his kids? Oh, sure. So I have seen Jacob play with his children. Um, I've seen him interact with them. Um, I've seen him from a, a father's perspective where he's taking care of them. Um, and yeah. Just inter yeah, just interacting in general. Um, the last time we went to visit, I was able to um, see how he teaches them. So they just planted like a little sunflower seed. And it was growing in their window. And so, um, you know, I've just seen him interact and like teach them different things about, you know, plants. And um, I was able to see that, you know, he bought a fish tank for the boys, you know, to kind of teach them responsibility. Um, but then he's just also there to show his love and support, too. So have you been to his home? I have, yes. 
And can you describe uh, the condition of the home? Oh, <laughs> his house is very clean, uh, cleaner than my house. But yeah, the boys have cute rooms and um, they're decorated really cool. Um, Luke, my grandson, really loved going in and playing um, in the rooms. And the rest of the house is very clean. He even has like a little play area down in the basement for the bigger toys. So uh, very wholesome, very clean, very organized. Have you ever seen one of the children upset, you know, falling down, hurting a knee, something like that when uh, when they're around their father? Um. Yeah, sure. So, you know, when kids play, they don't like to share. So an example would be um, Luke really wanted the truck that um, one of the boys was playing with. And, um, you know, he got a little um, teary eyed and didn't want to share. But, you know, Jake talked him down and, you know, talked to the importance of sharing. And then they just went along and, and you know, continued to play and have fun. Um, is that generally how Jake responds to conflict with the kids? Oh, yes. So I've seen him be very patient with the children um, and um, provide direction in a positive manner or redirect them to a different activity. Yeah, absolutely. Is, is, have you seen him discipline them in any other way? Um, no, no, I have not. Have you observed the children with their mother? Um, so... I, I don't have a lot of observation um, with their mother. No, it, it, it would not be very much. Okay. Have you ever observed the parties drinking alcohol together? Yes. And do you remember when that was? Yeah, so, um, you know, everybody's adults, you know, people go out. So um, uh, I did have an, uh, an occasion where we were out I was out with different people at the casino here in Battle Creek and we ran into Jacob and Megan and um, they were, uh, you know, we were having a couple drinks and um, I did notice that, you know, Megan was drinking or had a drink and I offered to buy them a drink and they declined. So sure. Yeah. Okay. And do you remember when that was? Um, that was in 2003. 2003? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. 2023. So sorry. That's okay. Um, it, when you ran into them at the casino, did either of them seem intoxicated, over the limit? No, no, absolutely not. And have you been around uh, Jacob when he seemed like he was he was drunk? Um, no, I mean, we were adults. We go to dinner occasionally and, and I have not seen him drink in. I, I can't even remember the last time, but. Yes, because I've known him for so long. We've had we've had drinks and things, but nothing inappropriate, nothing more than the reasonable adult would do. Have you ever uh, been with him at a time when you thought maybe he was too intoxicated to drive? Um, uh, I mean, so that's hard. So when you have a couple of drinks and you're responsible and you don't drive. So sure, we've had been at a home over like the span of 20 years where we we've had a couple of drinks and not driven. Sure. Okay. When, do you recall when you were at the casino in 2023, if both uh, Megan and Jake were drinking or was it just one of them? I, I did not see Jacob drinking. I offered to buy him a drink and he declined. Um, so the, they were on a date and um, he was being responsible and was the driver. So no, I did not see him drink at the casino. And you said that you were involved with coaching soccer. Yes. Yep. And how um, how long have you and Jake been doing that? So um, Jake helped me with futsal, um, which is indoor soccer for older boys. So the fifth and sixth grade. So we started that um, over uh, the kind of winter because this is spring soccer right now. Um, and then we just started um, spring soccer with the fifth and sixth grade boys and um, for his son Asher's team, the pre-K, so the littles. So that started three weeks ago. And how often do the, the little boys play soccer? So we have practice on Wednesdays and play on Saturdays. And do you have, um, are there options for practices on other days other than Wednesdays? Absolutely. So they practice soccer Monday through Friday. Mm -hmm. And can the parents choose what day they want to practice? Um, the, the coaches choose the day of the practice. Parents are not allowed to choose because what happens with Waddles Park is it's a rec league. So we're not um, we're not in it to like, you know, win and, and go to tournaments. It's more of like a learning league. 
um, more fun and just showing the boys sportsmanship and teaching them about the game and just getting exercise. So parents sign up through Wattles Park Men's Club and then they're assigned a team and then um, the coach then determines when the practice is. And has Asher been able to make all the practices? He has. Um, Jake has specifically had um, the practices on Wednesdays because that's his um, afternoon. And so he made sure that um, he was available and, and could bring Asher to those practices. And how does Asher do? Oh, he does really well. Um, he's full of smiles. So um, and he's outgoing. So, you know, three and four year olds are rambunctious and fun and sometimes shy. Um, but he's out there playing with all the kids and into it. Um, he's actually helped some of the other children that are a little bit shy. So he's been paired up with with um, little Gio, who doesn't like to go out very much. But yeah, he's doing really good. And what do you observe about Jacob when he's coaching the kids? Um, you know, he is patient. He is engaged. He um, shows them skills. And he um, is really kind of teaching them not just um, about the skills in winning the game, but also the um, sportsmanship and the fun. So he does a little thing at the end where he brings all the kids in and they have like a superheroes thing and he's teaching them how to um, shake hands at the end. So he he's a leader. He's a role model. Mm -hmm. Asher is four. Asher is four. And where is Sam when Asher's playing soccer? So um, Jake makes sure that he gets there early and um, uh, his mother the boys' grandmother is there to help on the sidelines. Um, and so they get there early and they set up um, and he's hanging out and kind of watching. Mm -hmm. and, and and what is Sam like when he's watching the, the, the soccer games with grandma? Oh, he's all smiles and playing. Yeah, he's excited to be out there too. He's got his little snack bag and his little toys and yeah. Do you, from what you've observed about uh your nephew, do you have any concerns at all about his ability to take care of the children? Absolutely not. Nope. And have you seen him take care of them for for any length of time? Um, yeah, I don't understand that question, but yeah, so absolutely. So he has them over the weekends. Um, he's um, I've been around him for, you know, just short play dates. I've been around him for the afternoon and, you know, he is he's a very good father. He takes care of their needs. Um, you know, if, if he needs to change a diaper or make sure that they're fed or, um, just in general care for them. So yes. When, when you said that he provides snacks or he, he gives them food, does he, what, what kinds of snacks or food does he provide for them? So I have seen like little healthy, um, snack bars. So, um, and then like the little, the little puff, there's like children puff, Puff balls, they're not like Cheetos, but they're, so that's an example of a snack that I've seen him provide. I, I have no further questions. Okay. Ms. Pazno, any crops? Thank you. Ms. Clark, you indicated that you see Jake, you said two to three times a week right now? That's correct. Okay. Did that start after these parties separated? Um. Yeah, because I see him more because of soccer. Yeah. Okay. If it wasn't soccer, you, how often do you think you would see him? Um. So I would say you know, once a week, a couple times a month. Um, yeah, just to get the kids together to play or just, you know. Now you, you indicate that getting the kids together to play, they're your grandchildren. Is that correct? They, yes, I do have three grandchildren. Okay. Do you have the grandchildren in your care primarily more than your daughter or are you the one arranging these play dates with Jake? Uh, yeah. So um, it takes a village to raise kids, right? It's a whole family. My daughter and her um, significant other work third shift. So um, I'm very engaged in, um, I have the children quite a bit, but they're in the care of my daughter, but I have them a lot. Okay. Now, in regards to prior to the to Megan um, Jacob separating, how often were you seeing Mr. Smith? So, you know, that's difficult. So I would see him during um, like special occasions, events, um, you know, sometimes in the summer we would have like a, a cookout. Some more family related um, holidays or cookouts? Correct. Okay. Would he come alone or would Megan come, come along with him? Um, sometimes he would be alone and sometimes that she would be with him. Okay. Now in regards to the soccer that you're now doing, um, is Jake's mother present at every game and practice? So we've had three practices and yes, yeah, she comes on Wednesdays too. Okay. Does, have you had any games? The games start on Saturday. Okay. Now you indicated that during the practice, um, Samuel is with Jake's mother. Is that what you indicated? Um, no, they, so Sam, um, is 
they, he comes with Jacob, right? And so it's sidelines. So there's people and they have chairs. So um, they come together, they set up and he's um, he starts off with his grandmother, but they're kids and they wander. So he talks to his mother too as well. Okay. So he does go and sit with his mother part of the time. Yeah, because he's out. Yeah, he's out and about. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Is there any, have you seen any issues with Samuel going to his mother? No, everyone is very cordial. Okay. Now, in regards to um, this casino, you said in 2023, when approximately in 2023 was this date that you saw them at the casino? Um, yeah, so that, that, so that was like June. It's been, it's been a long time. So I did write a letter. So let me just pull that up. I'm going to ask that she not refresh her recollection if she oh, doesn't. Know that's fine. Attention. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. So that's you think it was approximately June of 2023? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now you indicated that, how long did you see them at the casino? Did you hang out with them? Or was it just in passing? Um. So I would say 45 minutes to an hour at that. Yeah. Okay. Now at the, um, you indicated that you have seen Jake drink at, I'll say these family events or cookouts that you've had. Uh, yeah, rarely. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now you indicated that he doesn't drink any more than what a reasonable adult would do. Can you explain to me what a reasonable adult would do? How many drinks is that? Yeah. So, you know, you go out to dinner and you have a drink or so. Yeah. Is that one drink, two drinks, three drinks? Um, you know, I, so me as a reasonable adult, I will go out and have a drink sometimes with dinner, sometimes not, you know, that type of thing. And when you see Drake, Jake, Jacob drinking, is it beer, alcohol, or is it liquor? Um, so I would say I've seen him drink a beer. Mm -hmm. Only one beer. Um, so I don't really see him drink that often. So I will go way back to, um, you know, a bonfire, uh, or something. I was was trying to remember, like, maybe like it wasn't last summer, but maybe the summer before the summer before that he had a couple beers. It was just regular. Did he drive home after that? Um, yeah, because yeah, because he just had a couple. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, in regards to, again, that was at one of those family events. So you were only seeing Jacob a couple times a year rather than as frequent as you're seeing him now. Is that correct? I- I'm sorry, will you repeat that? You said that was in the summer approximately of 2022. And that was at a time where you were only seeing Jacob really at family events. You weren't seeing him as frequently as you're seeing him now. Is that correct? That's correct. So you don't know what he was doing outside of those few times you were seeing him. Is that correct? I was, I was not there. So that's correct. Okay. Now, when you, you said you're setting up play dates with your grandchildren and um, these children in this matter on weekends, how often are you seeing Asher and Samuel on the weekends that dad has them? So, you know, it's really hard because he doesn't have them very often. So, um, so like, I would say I have been to his house twice before soccer started to bring Luke, my youngest grandson over to play. Okay. And those two times that you brought Luke over to play was um, Lisa Smith, his mother there? Um, Lisa was there the first time. The second time, no, she was not there. Now you indicated that Jake helped you with futsal in this winter. Was that at Kingdom? Um, No, it's Waddles Park. So Waddles Park Men's Club is a rec league here in Battle Creek. Okay. And that was this fall or this winter? Yeah, it was so... So spring soccer started in April. So we finished futsal in, um, there was only like a three week break. So we finished futsal like at the beginning of March, middle of March. All right. Did you ever see Megan at futsal? No, no, I did not. You never saw her in the building? N- no, I did not. Now you indicated that Jake Jacob is extremely patient with the kids and is patient with all these kids that he's coaching. Have you ever seen him get frustrated with the kids? No. So last night at soccer practice, when the kids were hanging on him, he wasn't getting frustrated. Oh no! You, kids are so fun. No, I, I did not see any frustration out of him at all. He handled it very appropriately. Okay. Did Megan have to come out in the field and actually help with the kids at that point in time? I did not see Megan come out on the field. Um, but we separate, so we put the kids in teams. So I, uh, the the field is small, so I'm on one side, and um, Jake's on the other. But if she came out, that's not un, um, ordinary. We have parents come out throughout the games. It's all about 
um, making the children feel comfortable because some of them are shy. So like in my group, I had two of the grandparents out with me helping um, one of the children. Um, the kids will run back and forth to their parents as they need to. Um, if they have, you know, their shoes untied or they want to drink or, you know, they just need their parents. So if she was out there, it's not unusual. All the, all the parents have the opportunity to come out there and do that. Okay. You just didn't see her out there yesterday. That's I, fair to say. I, that's fair. Yes. Okay. I mean, she was there on the sidelines. Yes. Mm -hmm. And she does bring um, another child with her to Douglas. So uh, she could have. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Were any of, was Asher or Samuel playing futsal in the fall or in the winter? Uh, no, that was um, the fifth and sixth grade team. Okay. And was Jacob, Jake at every practice? He was at most of the practices, yes. And he subbed in and coached without me too, because I had to miss, I had to miss a game. So he coached on his own. Okay. When you guys had family events prior to these party separation, and I'll say in September or August of 2023, and you indicated that there's times Megan would come to these family events and there's times that she didn't come to these events. Did the boys go along with Jacob or were the boys home with Megan? Um, so as, you know, sometimes, you know, Sam, it was just, you know, one child, it wasn't both. But um, I would say sometimes Jake would come on his own and sometimes he would be able to bring the children. Okay, I have no further questions. Okay. Ms. McNeff, any redirect? Uh, briefly. Have, have you had any complaints from any of the parents regarding Jacob's coaching? No, actually, it's the opposite. So after futsal, I had two separate parents come up and... Um, uh, say how well they thought that we coached and that they wished that they could um, be on our next team if we were coaching in the spring. Um, so we got compliments from the parents. And then um, Tony Zugo, who runs Wells Park Men's Club, um, actually complimented us and said that he wished that he had more coaches like Jake. Um, so no. Was, was there an, a child uh, last night at, at soccer named Douglas? Yes. And who is Douglas? Uh, um, Douglas is, he comes with um, Megan and her family. I believe that um, they're, they're related or they're, what, they're taking care of him. I think her sister. And were there, were there any issues with Douglas's behavior last night at soccer that you can recall? Um, I, I saw the only, th you know, kids are kids. So I'll put that out there, but I did see Douglas kicking Asher and I had to ask him to please stop. And he did. It was, yes. And no, normal kid stuff. Yes. Okay. I have no further questions. Ms. Pays know any uh, recross? Nothing further, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Lark, thank you for your testimony. You're free to go. Have a good day. Okay. Thank you. Next witness, Ms. McNiff. Um, do we have anybody in the waiting room? Uh, Anta Lutz is here. Oh, yay. Let's call her. Ms. Lutz, where do you work? Uh, New Way Counseling Center in Kalamazoo. And how long have you been there? Uh, New Way was established uh, March 31st of 1998. And have, have you have you worked there that whole time? Uh, well, I it, it's a private practice. And so, yes, I, I started New Way in 1998. Mm -hmm. and, and I, go ahead. What, what's your position? Um, I'm an owner and a therapist here. And what's your educational background? My educational background, I have a PhD in um, behavioral health care administration. I'm a certified addictions counselor. I'm internationally certified um, as an alcohol and drug counselor. I have my substance abuse professional certification to do all DOT and federal cases, and, and I'm an anger management specialist. How long have you uh, been doing the substance abuse counseling and assessment? Um, since 1994. And you do some other counseling as well that you said the anger management? Yes, I do anger management in combination with the substance abuse counseling. That is my main um, job that I do. Mm -hmm. Do you have any any idea how many substance abuse assessments you do in a in a, in a year? About three to four hundred. Okay. And have you testified in court before? No, I have not. And have you provided your assessments uh, for court as a result of court orders before? 
Absolutely. I I actually conduct assessments for all Southwest Michigan, for all the um, Allegan, Berrien, all the way up to Ingham County. I've um, I used to run the court services at Gateway Recovery Services. So yes, I have provided several assessments for the courts. That's what I do. Thank you. I, I would ask that uh, Ms. Lutz be deemed an expert in substance abuse assessment and counseling. Okay. Ms. Uh, Pays now any reply. I'm familiar with Ms. Lutz and I do have no objection. Okay. Or we'll uh, admit her for purposes of the substance abuse uh, assessment and uh, counseling. Uh, Ms. Lutz, do you know Jacob Smith? I can. I performed a substance use evaluation on Jacob Smith on December fifth, uh, twenty twenty three. And when you when you perform a substance abuse assessment, what what steps do you take? Well, it's a combination of clinical interviewing, um, personal history, substance use history, um, self reported um, background, and clinical testing in instruments. Now, with self reporting, it's possible that people could lie to you, correct? True. Yes. That's correct. Is there a way that you um, can assess whether people are being truthful with you when, when they're doing the assessment with you? Well, that's part of the clinical testings that you use. The SASE test um, has a empirical testing accuracy of 92%. One of the, um, uh, one of the, what am I trying to say? When you give the test, it actually will reveal if the person is not being honest. The defensive score would be at an elevated level. So, I mean, it. I do those kind of testings besides the cl clinical interviewing to and, assure and, accuracy. And what is the SASE test? What does it stand for? Substance. Uh, it stands for Substance Abuse Subtle Screening Inventory. And it's a SASE 4, so it's been around for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And is that an instrument that you, you administer on a regular basis? Absolutely. Absolutely. And did you, did you administer that test to Mr. Smith? Yes, I did. And did you prepare a written assessment for Mr. Smith? Yes, I did. And is that written assessment dated December 6th of 2023? That is correct. And did you send me a copy of that assessment? Oh, I lost you. That, that is correct. Mm -hmm. And yes. did you, did you sign that assessment on December 6th of 2023? Yes, I did. And my exhibit one is a copy of that assessment. I would move admission of exhibit one, okay. which, is, which is Ms. Lutz's assessment. This uh, page now, any uh, response? No objection. Okay. Thank Plaintiff's you. exhibit one will be admitted. Ms. Lutz, after testing Mr. Smith and assessing him, were you able to come to a conclusion regarding his um, his use of substances? Yes. And and what was that conclusion? Um, he was given a diagnosis of alcohol use disorder, mild F10, F10, which and, is abuse, not dependence. Yes. And what is what does that mean? Um, that um, that means that he has um, abused alcohol in the past, but he is not dependent. And did you see any indication that when you were assessing him, he was continuing to abuse alcohol? No, actually, when he came in for his evaluation, the last time he consumed alcohol was uh, September 23rd of 2023. And did you have any recommendations for him going forward? Uh, yes, I did. And what were those recommendations? Um, I advised him that he should uh, seek uh, individual counseling uh, to further explore ways to communicate in a healthy, peaceful way um, with his ex-girlfriend um, for the benefit of the, of the children. And I know that he was in current counseling, and if he was able to um, obtain these goals in counseling, he should continue. Did you see an indication that he was struggling to communicate well? I did further testing on that, and and from what I gathered, I did not have I it, the communication is just a breakdown in learning how to be more mindfulness of the of the other individual. So I don't see him having, as far as a communication struggle, it's just a communication with his ex partner. Um, so potentially just an issue between these particular two individuals. That is correct. And did you see any indications of any uh, anger management problems? I did not assess him for anger management, um, and that's not what's stated. I mean, I, I can't really comment on that because it's not in the assessment. So, but I did not assess from, and um, from the further testing that I did, there was, um, it did not indicate that there was issues at that time, but I did not do an anger management assessment on him. 
Okay. So from j- just from the assessment that you did do, did you see any red flags with regard to him being able to be an effective and safe parent for his children? I'm yes. going to object in regards to that question. She's here as an alcohol assessor, um, not someone to make a custody or parenting time recommendation. Okay. Ms. McNiff, what's your reply? Well, my, my question wasn't about uh, asking for a recommendation for custody or parenting time. It was just, did she see any red flags that would indicate that it, he could be up have problems as a parent well maybe you need to lay a foundation so we can tell if uh, again that it'd be appropriate to give that uh, diagnosis um did you talk to mr smith about his about his children and his parenting yes and do you in in your experience with counseling does substance abuse play into a person's ability to parent effectively or not parent effectively oh it can absolutely um, does communication and ability to communicate play into a person's ability to parent effectively and safely? Yes. From those particular issues that you uh, assessed Mr. Smith for, specifically with alcohol and communication, did you see anything that would indicate uh, concerns about his ability to parent? I'm going to object again. She's asking about his ability to parent. She, the question really is, is, does he have the ability to communicate, not parent? Because Ms. Lust does not have enough information provided to make such recommendation well yeah miss mcniff maybe you need to set more of a foundation or address whether she's capable of doing that based on her limited assessment do that um ms let's do you do you feel that that based on the 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 assessment that you had with mr smith that you can speak to that issue I feel his um, communication skills that, um, like I said, it just need further counseling right now. I, I, I believe that uh, substance abuse does not play a role in his ability to parent or to, to communicate. Um, so um, I'm not sure what else I can say because I, I really am limited to what is in this evaluation. Did, did you have any concerns about his ability to control his uh, use of, of, of alcohol? at this at the time of the assessment no i i have no further questions thank you thank you miss Lutz. you hesitated a second ago when you asked if he had his concerns to control his alcohol at the time of the assessment do you think he had based on your conversations with him in the past had would raise concerns in regards to his ability to control alcohol um if i hesitated i'm sorry what i had stated is when he came in here um, uh, which was in December, he had not consumed alcohol since September. And he, based on what he had told me in the recent times, it does not appear that he has a problem with um, managing his use. How often did Mr. Smith prior to September of 2023 indicate that he was consuming alcohol? Um, according to the evaluation in the past 12 months, at most, he was consuming four days out of the month. Did he tell you what he was consuming during those four days a month? Yes, he did. What was he consuming? Um, I have an average of three truly hard seltzers, um, up to two truly hard seltzers, and two shots of liquor at a setting. I just want to clarify that. He would have three Trulies, two Trulies, and two shots of liquor at oh, each no, setting? No. Averaging. So on an average time when he drank... It was three Trulies at most, sorry, it was two Trulies and two shots. Okay. Now, when you indicated you sent Mr. Smith off for continued communication counseling, did you refer him to anybody in particular? No, I did not. Okay. And was it that counselor to set goals for communication or did you specifically tell him goals? Oh, you were just breaking up. Was it what? I said, can you hear me? I can hear you now. Yes. Okay. So I asked you that when you said you had set told Mr. Smith that he had a certain goals regarding communication, were those goals you set up or were there goals you were hoping he would set up with his new counselor? I advised him what the recommendation was and I advised him that if um, that he was encouraged to speak to his current counselor and if he was unable to um, achieve those goals that he should seek out other counseling. Okay. Did he tell you who his current counselor was? I have he, let me, I'm looking at the evaluation. Um, I have individual family counseling in Kalamazoo. Um, I would have to look further in on the actual, what I wrote. No, I apologize. I only have family counseling in Kalamazoo um, is all I have. I don't, I have an actual name of the individual. Did you tell you how? Go ahead. No, go ahead. I would just say that it started in November of 2023. That's all I have. 
He, so he had only had a couple of sessions prior to meeting with you in December? Uh, two to three, it looks like. Okay. How was Mr. Smith referred to you for an alcohol assessment? Do you know? Um, by his attorney. Okay. And did he indicate it was for custody purposes for you? Yes. I was believe Mr. Respond okay. oh, no, I'm sorry. It was because of a response to a motion. Yes. For custody from September 21st, 2023. Okay. Now, did was Mr. Smith the only one who participated with you in regards to this assessment? I think you asked if was he the only one that participated. Yes, that is correct. Did you get input from any third parties? No, I did not. Okay. I what I did what I did have is I had the I believe the I read this motion. I did ask for that, which is from what's the date on here? Um, I don't see the date. Um, I did read the motion. There is a motion from the court is what I did um, go over with him when he was in here. Okay. On September 23rd of 2023, when he indicated that was his last drink, did he tell you what he drank that day or was that part of your average drinks that Mr. Smith would have? I will look. Okay. On September 23 of 23, um, it looks like on that particular day, I believe he had, uh, it looks like a beer, maybe. That's what it says. That He said, oh, I'm trying to read my handwriting, sorry. Um, March to talk, yes, yes. I don't, I, well, let me apologize because I, I, I don't want to state because I don't want to be inaccurate. I'm not sure exactly what he consumed on that day. Okay. As part of your report under your assessment, you have underlined that overall this test result identifies that there's a need for his client to learn to communicate more effectively to reduce miscommunication, which could potentially cause problems with his co-parenting with his ex-girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Is that what you received under what testing? The SSSI for? No, that was under the family assessment measure general scale that was under that testing. Okay. Now you indicated, and I know you do a number of these um, evaluations each year or assessments. Um, what are the typical reasons for the assessments? I, I do a wide range. I mean, from court assessments, from OWIs to possession charges to DOT cases where um, folks test positive. Um, uh, I've, uh, I do driver's license assessments where people are trying to obtain their driver's license back when they've obtained two or more offenses. So I do a wide variety of substance use evaluations. How many custody assessments, how many social, how many alcohol assessments do you do for custody, do you think? That's not the majority. I would say that's probably a half a dozen. I mean, I used to do a lot more, um, probably five, 10 years ago, but I do quite a few federal cases now. Okay. Attorney McNiff asked you that a lot of this is self-reporting. So you do further tests to try and find the validity of their self-reporting. Is that correct? That's now, correct. You labeled Mr. Smith as mild. Is it true that if hypothetically you were provided more information from him that that could change to more of a moderate or higher than a mild um, dependency and not dependency, mild use. That is probable. Sassy usually catches anybody that um, that's why I like enjoy it. Um, it's why I prefer to use the Sassy test uh, when it comes to these cases, because it's pretty, it's pretty accurate in catching folks that are trying to hide that type of information. Okay. So let's go into that a little bit further. So if, if, if Mr. Smith, well, let me rephrase that. Did Mr. Smith tell you that alcohol in the past had caused issues and fights between him and his ex-girlfriend? That it, it appears to be have been a conflict. Yes. Right. So he did admit that to you. Yes. Did he, did he have, and keep in mind too, I have to keep with what's in this. I, I have to really keep with what's in the assessment because that's what the release is for. So whatever questions I would prefer, if you could gear them towards what's in the evaluation, because that's all I have a release for um, when I'm testifying your, today. Your honor, she's here testifying and she was qualified as an expert. So I think it's appropriate if I ask hypothetical questions, if she would be able to answer that. Court will allow it to, to the extent that uh, she did the assessment on that uh, particular issue. Okay. And Ms. Lutz, you did the alcohol assessment, is that correct? I think she froze. Yeah. I think she did too. Okay. She's back with us now. Go ahead and ask your question. Correct. Again, Thank you. Did you hear me, Ms. Lutz? Okay. Um, what, what you just asked the judge is what I just heard. Yes, I did hear that. Okay. And then did, did you hear me say you actually did the alcohol assessment in this case? 
Yes, that's correct. I'm so just following you, the release. I'm just following the release because of the, the confidentiality. So that I'm, I just want to make sure that I stay within the realms of the release. That's all I'm saying. No, and I understand that. So I'm going to ask you some hypothetical questions in regards to your assessment. Okay. Okay. If there are text messages from Mr. Smith admitting that alcohol is a problem in his life, could that change your diagnosis if he was admitting that? It's possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it also possible if he admitted on more than one occasion that he really needs to give it up because it's causing issues? Could that possibly change your assessment? It's possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. With those two questions that I just asked you, did Mr. Smith tell you during your assessment that he had made those admissions to a third party besides you? That I would have to look because I... At, I mean, this was done in December. So um, I was not given any text during this evaluation. Um, no, I don't believe so, but I, I, I don't believe I have that. So if you had that information, it could have changed the testing in regards to your assessment. Is that a fair statement? That is possible. Mm -hmm. If during your assessment, it was disclosed that Mr. Smith has thrown up on occasion from drinking too much alcohol, could that change the assessment and the recommendations? It is possible. Okay. I, I, folks that abuse alcohol also throw up. So on, you know, on occasions. Do, during your assessment, did Mr. Smith admit that there had been times that he had thrown up or vomited from his alcohol abuse? No. And if that information would have been provided to you during the assessment, that possibly could have changed the outcome of the assessment as well. Is that correct? That is possible. Yes. If somebody has routine fights, not only with their ex, but other family members regarding alcohol use, is that something that could change your assessment? That is possible. Mm -hmm. And is it so during your assessment with Mr. Smith, did he admit to you that there have been times when he has been in arguments with his mother about his alcohol use? No, I don't believe that was brought up. All right. So that could have changed the assessment as well if that was presented to you. Is that correct? That's correct. Did Mr. Um, Smith talk to you about how much he consumes alcohol, why he plays golf? I believe that was one of the... When he, there was an incident with golfing, yes, um, that he did talk about. Um, but once again, that would be in the realm of what I had reported. In regards to how much he was consuming? That's correct. Mm -hmm. If there was, if, if there was other information mm -hmm. that he was actually consuming or purchasing more alcohol during golf, could that have changed the assessment? That is possible. Did Mr. Smith ever advise you that while he was playing golf, he would buy a six pack or more of beer to consume? No, I don't believe I have that information. And that probably would have changed the assessment and the outcome as well. Is that correct? That is correct. Did, if somebody admits that they've been, have driven the children intoxicated, can that change the assessment? Yes, that is possible. Even if they weren't arrested for it? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Now, did Mr. Smith admit during your alcohol assessment that he had driven the children intoxicated at any point in time? No, I don't believe so. No. And so I'm going to ask you again, if that knowledge would have been presented to you during your evaluation or assessment, that probably would have changed your um, assessment. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. So if as an assessor, as of yourself, if you're not provided a full picture because someone's self-reporting, and I know you're relying on tests, if you don't have a full understanding of what's going on, it can actually affect the outcome of the testing or the assessment. Is that correct? Sure. But this is one of the reasons why I ask for the additional documentation when they come in, when it's okay. these types of evaluation, I need more input. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's but why. It, okay. Mm -hmm. But if they didn't provide you that information, you have no way of knowing. Is that correct? That's correct. And you go solely by what your client at the time provides for the assessment, correct? That is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Ms. McNiff, any uh, redirect? Yes, Your Honor. 
Uh, Ms. Lutz, did you find that the SASE indicated that Mr. Smith was, uh, his responses to you were valid? That's correct, yes. Mm -hmm. And would you agree that context matters? I think I lost you again. Can you, can you say that again? I just sure. lost you again. Sure, sure. Would you agree that context matters in terms of family arguments regarding alcohol use? For example, if a, if a, if a mother is upset with a 21-year-old son for drinking too much, it's very different than having an argument with, with your child who's 40 and has children. That's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, and so these hypotheticals in a vacuum might mean something or might not mean something. Yes. Would, um, would you agree that you might buy a six pack um, to go golfing and if you drink it all by yourself, it means one thing, but if you drink it with your golf partner, it's might not mean anything. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Um, I, so do, I do want to say in regards to that sassy too, I've conducted a lot of these sassies and I'll tell you his scores were very low. And if there was a true ongoing problem with his use, it would definitely reveal in some of these scores. Um, I generally don't see scores as low as I had for Mr. Smith. So I do want to indicate that uh, once again, that this is a pretty valid testing instrument, but um, your honor. I'm going to move to strike that statement as there was no question before the witness at that point in time regarding her clarification of the testing. Well, I think we've kind of asked a lot of things. We've asked a lot of hypotheticals. So I think obviously she's attempting to clarify, but uh, Ms. McNiff, if you want, you can explore that. Um, thank you. I, I don't, I do think that I asked her whether or not the SASE test indicated that his answers were valid and, and she was responding to that question. Okay, the court will allow the answer. I think that uh, I think a response was uh, again responsive. Um, would you would you also agree that all individuals have a different level of tolerance for alcohol use? For example, one a, a spouse might think drinking a case of beer in a night is fine, and another spouse might think drinking two beers is too much. Yes, I so, do believe. Mm -hmm. So arguments over alcohol use are very dependent on having all of that information in, in terms of looking at hypotheticals. 100%. And I think based on people's past experience, they're going to view alcohol drinking different than others. You know, everybody's going to have a different view of alcohol use, um, depending on what their past experiences are. Did Mr. Smith indicate to you that, that he drank a lot when he was younger? Yes. And did that change over the years, according to your interview with him? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I have... You know, his maximum use was between 20 and 23. And um, so, and now he is 33. And is, is that kind of tapering off as people age? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I saw you talking, but I didn't hear you. Oh, well, I mean, for, for particularly for, for Mr. Smith, um, it, it appears that his, you know, prime abuse time was in his 20s. And is that typical for an individual? Sure. Absolutely. Once you um, gain more responsibilities and you're at a different point in your life, yes, that usually um, if there is not an alcohol dependency um, issue, that use tapers down because of your further responsibilities. And do you factor into your um, your assessment whether or not somebody has had more of, a, of, a, of an alcohol, they've used more alcohol as a young person? Um, in the past, for example, if somebody came in and said, I've never had a drink. I, I, I don't, I just don't drink. I didn't drink when I was 20. I don't drink when I'm 50. Would that be different than somebody who says, I drank a lot when I was in my twenties, but now I'm down to a couple beers. Well, I would say this all plays into a factor in the assessment, but I look at what current use is, you know, and how long ago was that abuse? I, I believe from my experience of 30 years, um, most people go through a period of time in their life where they may um, abuse alcohol more than others. Um, but, you know, like I said, as you get older and life, life, life circumstances change, generally the use changes too. I, I have no further questions. Ms. Pace, now any uh, recross? Nothing further, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Lutz, uh, thank you for your testimony. You're free to go have a good day. Okay, thank you. So who do we have? I have a Lindsay McMillan. Then I will call Lindsay. Okay. I was going to ask if we could take a quick recess so I could use the restroom. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's, <laughs> so. let's, let's take 10 minutes. We agree. Right. Thank you, Your Honor. Right. I'll put everybody back in the way. Ms. McMillan? Ms. McMillan, where do you live? Uh, in Chicago, Illinois. And do you work? Yes, I do. What do you do? I'm a registered nurse. And do you know the parties? Uh, yes. How do you know them? Jacob Smith is my cousin. 
And how often did you see him when you were growing up? Uh, very regularly. We lived on the same street, so we would have um, very frequent family functions together. And what kind of a relationship did you have with him when you were young? Um, we did lots of activities together. Um, I can remember fond memories of ATV rides, blueberry picking, bonfires. Um, we did very many activities together. What kind of a relationship do you have with him now? Um, now, since I live out of state, uh, we try to make uh, efforts to see each other whenever we I come into town, um, just for special events, holidays, things like that. Uh, any idea on how often you're able to to see him and do things with him? Uh, more recently, in the last couple of years, uh, I've tried to come home every few months. Um, before that, when I was living in Texas, it was about once or twice a year. And what what kind of an adult is is Jacob now? Um, Jacob, I know him to be a very responsible adult. Um, he's had a very successful career in the military, um, and he's trans transitioned that into a very successful career um, in the civilian world as well. Have you seen him be impulsive? Never. Um, what kind of a temper does he have? Um, he's very level-headed. Um, I've always known him to keep his calm, and uh, I've never known him to have a temper. Uh, how how well does he communicate with you? Um, very well. Whenever we have, uh, you know, events in the um, at family functions and stuff, he always just um, talk and have clear communication there. Is he helpful to family members? Uh, very. He's a very family-oriented person, and has been particularly helpful to me in my adult life, transitioning from um, living on my own and military life. How how has he been helpful to you? Um, so when I was 17 is when I graduated high school and I moved um, from Michigan to Texas. Um, I was a military spouse, um, so I was kind of new to adult life and this military world in general. Um, so I was in El Paso, Texas, where he was stationed in Tucson, Arizona. Um, so he would regularly come over to El Paso or I would try to go over to um, Arizona. And we would, you know, just kind of be like a mentor to me, um, kind of getting me adjusted to adult life and what to expect with military things, stuff like that. He always made sure I knew that um, I could go to him for anything. Have you seen him with his children? Yes. And what, what do you observe about him when he's with his children? Um, he's always very attentive. I notice that that's always the top priority and his top focus um, when his children are present. Um, always making sure that they're taken care of and involved with everything. Have um, have you seen him, you know, do activities with his kids? Um, since our hanging out recently has been more like family events and stuff like that, um, it's limited to family functions. But when we were there, I seen him, you know, play with his kids. Um, just at a recent function, I remember um, one of my close family friends, Kenzie Ashley, she had her son there as well. And he had all the kids in the basement playing with them um, while the adults were upstairs. <laughs> have you ever seen him have to uh, discipline the children or redirect them? Um, nothing specific comes to mind, but I can say that there's never been any yelling or, um, you know, harsh words said. Any corporal punishment? Definitely not. And have you um, observed him with, with Ms. Wenzel? On a handful of occasions. Okay. And have you observed the, the children with Ms. Wenzel? Uh, on very few occasions, um, just when at the very beginning, um, when the babies were young, she would be at some family functions, um, but not very well so that I can speak on how they are with her. Okay. Have you ever observed the, the, uh, Jacob and Ms. Wenzel drinking alcohol together? Um, only on one occasion, I can recall, um, which was in July of 2023. And where, where did that occur? At Firekeeper's Casino in Battle Creek. And what did you observe? Um, I was there with my mother, Amy Clark, and a close family friend, Kenzie Ashley. Uh, we were there um, for not too long. We seen them um, and greeted them, talked to her a little bit. I know my mother offered to buy them a drink, and that's when we were told um, that they were here for, they're out on a date night. Jacob was uh, the designated driver, so he declined and did not have a drink with us. And could you, um, could you ascertain whether they seemed like they had been drinking earlier or not? Did either of them seem intoxicated? Um, Jacob did not seem intoxicated, no. Um, I don't recall Miss um, Wenzel speaking much. Um, she said very few words. When when you were um when when you were out west and 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 you were a military spouse and Jacob was in the military, did did you go out drinking with him then? Um, there had been times that we would have a few beverages on our hangouts, but it was never the priority of the um, hangout. It was always just kind of in a responsible manner. He never drove. Um, it was always. Uh, in a safe setting and never when he was in the care of his kids. Um, if you, did you ever go out and drink and then have to get a ride back to someplace else? Um, no. And the times that we would hang out, it would always be at one of our houses. Um, and that when I was in Texas, it would either be at my apartment or his apartment. Um, and it was always, that would be the place we would consume. We wouldn't go out to anywhere. And have you ever seen uh, Jacob vomit after, after, after drinking too much? Never. Have you ever seen him out of control? Never. Have you ever seen him drink to the point that he became angry or violent in any way? Never. Um, ha have you seen anything when 
Jacob's children are in his care that would give you concerns about their safety? Absolutely not. I've always known Jake to be a very um, kind and loyal person, and that shows in his um, his parenting style as well. He's very attentive to his kids and has been a, a strong presence as a daily role model to them. When when you've seen him at these family functions, have you observed him changing diapers? Yes. Uh, have you ob- observed him getting food for the children? Yes. If the children need something, does he break away from whatever he's doing to attend to the child? Absolutely. I think he's always put them first um, and made them the top priority of any function. I have no further questions. Okay, Ms. Uh, Paisno and E. Cross. Thank you. Ms. McMillan, how old are you currently? I'm 26. So with back almost 10 years ago is when you guys were in Arizona and Texas. Is that correct? Uh, correct. A little bit less than 10. And Mr. Smith is your cousin, correct? Yes. So you're probably not going to say anything negative about him. Is that correct? Um, I would speak the truth. Okay. I didn't say speak the truth, but I'm sure he didn't call you as a witness today because you were going to say something negative about him. Is that correct? Um, I suppose. Okay. And in the past six months, how many times have you seen Mr. Smith? I couldn't give you an exact number, but I would guess um, anywhere between four to six times. Okay. And during those four to six times, how long were you with him? An hour, two hours, four hours? Um, probably more than four hours. Most of these would be for family events and functions, um, holidays, things like that, which tend to last mostly afternoon and evening. Okay. And so you haven't seen him outside a holiday event. Is that correct? Not in the last six months. Okay. And other than holiday events, just like special events, family events, things like that. Not necessarily only holidays. Okay. When you say special events for the family, what do you mean by that? Just, I mean, I, I come home so infrequently that a lot of times we'll try to do like a dinner or meet up just, you know, when okay. we haven't had to hang out in a while. Okay. And would that be just you and him or would that be a whole family event? Um, most of the whole family, aunts, uncles, um, my grandparents' house would be the usual spot. Okay. At those family events or holidays, is there alcohol there? Yes, there is. Do the, and do people consume alcohol there? Not very regularly. And I have never once seen Jacob consume alcohol um, at one of these family functions since he's had kids. Since he's had kids or since their parties separated? To my knowledge, since he's had kids, I can't recall him really drinking at any of these family functions in the past multiple years. Okay. Prior to, when, prior to, I'll say August of 2023, how regularly were you seeing Jacob with the kids? It, it would have been about the same sporadically um, over every few months when I would come into town. Okay. How often do you talk to Jake, Jacob? Um, every couple months. We try to stay in contact over, um, you know, phone and stuff, but it's, it's hard with, we have busy lives. I work night shifts, so I don't really talk with much family other than when I come into town. Okay. So fair to say <clears throat> you and Jake aren't as close as you used to be. You don't get as much contact. Is that correct? Um, we still remain very close um, just in the terms of contact. Um, no, we don't hang out as much. Okay. At these family functions that you indicated prior to the separation of the parties, was Megan at all of those same family functions with the children? Um, she was at a handful of them, but prim- primarily it was um, Jake bringing the kids alone. I can remember her at a few functions, but um, not very many. Okay. When she was at those functions, was she attentive to the children? Um, she didn't interact too much with me. Um, she kind of was more quiet and reserved. Um, she, you know, was with the kids as well, but. So you said she was with the kids? Yes. Okay. Now, um. Prior to 2023, July of 2023. When you were seeing Jacob, those, I'll say few and far between at family functions, did you indicate you didn't see him drinking alcohol? To my knowledge, no, I did not see him drinking alcohol at these events. Okay. But alcohol was there, correct? At the holiday events, yes, there'd be like, you know, wine or something like that. Usually not okay. hard liquor. Okay. Except for the casino that you saw Megan at where you are indicating she was consuming alcohol. Have you seen Megan consume alcohol any other time besides that one time? No, that's my knowledge. Okay. I've only seen her a few handful of times. Okay. So you don't know Megan very well. Is that fair to say? Uh, yes. Okay. Do you know how long Megan and Jake dated? Um, I, I'm not sure of that timeline, no. Okay, I have no further questions. Okay, Ms. McNiff, any uh, re- redirect? Nothing further. Okay, uh, Ms. McMillan, thank you for your testimony. You're free to go and have a good day. Thank you as well. Next witness, uh, Ms. McNiff. Um, who do we have in the waiting room? I have a Brittany Ryder. We will call Brittany. Okay, go ahead, Ms. McNiff. I, I just want to make sure real quickly, um, Brittany, is, is uh, your husband with you? 
Is he yes. And then he's downstairs with the kids. Okay. So he can't hear you. No, no. Okay. Because he'll, he'll be our next witness. And I just want to make sure that there's no, that, that he, he doesn't overhear your testimony. Yeah, we understand. Yeah. He's downstairs with the kids. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Brittany, where do you live? Battle Creek. And you work? Um, so I left my job at Bronson. I had a leadership role there for eight years. So I left there when I had kids to be a stay-at-home mom. So that's my primary job. Um, I recently did take on a part-time retail job just for fun. Okay. Uh, do you know the parties? I do. And how do you know them? Um, Jacob is my brother. How, how close in age are you to Jacob? We are 15 months apart. Okay. And what kind of relationship did you have with him when, when you were young? We grew up in a very close-knit family. So my brother and I were like best friend siblings. We did everything together. And what kind of relationship do you have with him now? The same kind of thing. We see each other frequently. We talk a lot. We we get together just for the heck of it. Um, he visits my house. I visit his. Same kind of close relationship. And and you understand that even though he's your brother, you need to tell the truth about him here today. Absolutely. How often do you see him now? Weekly. And you said that you have children? I do. H how old are your children? So my youngest turns one tomorrow and my daughter is three and a half. Are they close with Jacob's children? Yes, they are. And how, how often do the children see each other? Well, um, now since his time is limited, we try and make some sort of play day every time that Jake is, has the kids. Um, so every weekend he has them, there's one day on that weekend that we get the kids together. What, what kind of an adult is, is your brother? Jake is, he is very thoughtful. Um, whether it's just lending a helping hand or coming bearing gifts, um, honest, supportive in every aspect of life, whether it's personal at home, whether it's a jump in my career, um, be always supportive. Um, and his dedication and commitment to anything he does in life, um, he, he sticks to it. He's just so goal oriented. And he's intelligent. Like even since school days, he's so smart. Then he goes in the military and gets promoted there. And even in his role now, like he is, he's a smart guy and he's always so positive. I could be, you know, down and out or whatever. And he just finds a way to lighten the mood, crack a joke, bring a positive and just a positive environment everywhere it he goes. Sounds like you're proud of your brother. I'm very proud of him. Do you have any issues with uh, communicating with him? No. Do you, do you find that he's an effective communicator? Yes, absolutely. Does he spend time with your children? He does. And what does he like with your children? He treats them like their own. He's so interactive. He'll be playing in, I have a ball pit in my living room. He'll be in the ball pit with them. He'll be tickling them. He'll be talking baby noises to my littlest one. He'll go into my play kitchen. They'll be making pretend dinners together. They'll be in my backyard, riding the quads around, chasing them around, teaching them how to hit a ball off the tee. Do you, does he ever watch your children? He has on um, a couple different occasions. And do you trust him like to change diapers and get them fed? Yes, absolutely. Um, have you seen him with his kids? I have. And how? what does he like with his kids? Just the same interactive father. He is always teaching them something new. He's, you know, outside in the yard. But, you know, even when he's like mowing the lawn, Asher will have his little lawnmower pushing the lawn or... Um, He's just so engaged. He takes advantage of every little minute that he gets to spend with them. Is, is he able to handle all four of the little ones together? Yeah. He, you know, there's one time where I didn't like actually leave premises. I just had needed to leave the area for a little bit. And he came back and they were like playing ring around the rosy. And he just gets, he just finds an activity that they all can do and entertained at. I have a water table in the backyard and all the kids were playing at the water table when I got home one day. So yeah, everything has seemed to go fine. Have you um, seen him with the children in Ms. Wenzel? I have. Has he been helpful to Ms. Wenzel? Yes, all the time. Did he ever have concerns about that he shared with you about Ms. Wenzel complaining about him not helping around the house? Yes, um, a couple different occasions. You know, we all live in very close proximity. And there were a couple times where he had just stopped by the house just to talk and had expressed concerns during those visits, how he's just... He does so much um, after even a long days of work. You know, he will um, come home and cook dinner and clean up dinner and give the boys a bath, get the boys in their pajamas, and she will find one thing that he didn't do and would get upset at him about it. Um, Did you ever um, observe him helping around his house? Yeah, I've seen him. We've Our random stops at their house, he'd be out in the yard um, picking up 
doing something in the yard. That was like his main, his, or like what he liked to do. He just has a passion of yard work. But there were also other occasions where um, we attended um, events at their house. I think one was a birthday party and the other one was a baptismal like congratulatory party. And I seen him, he was packing up the food and picking up the kitchen after the event, even with guests still there. He, he was picking things up, getting the table cleared off, putting the food in the fridge and emptying the trash all while we were still there. Did, um, did the house always seem neat and tidy when you were over there? Yep. Have you been to his current house? I have. And, and what's that house like? His house is beautiful. You know, he spent a lot of time and energy completely remodeling that house. Um, everything from ceiling to the floor has been redone and it's, it's beautiful. New furniture, new um, appliances. It's, I'm so proud of him for doing that. Is it neat and tidy? Yes. Yes. Based on what your observations were, do you believe that Ms. Wenzel's complaints about your brother not helping were valid? No. And why not? Because I know, I know he is a hard worker. I know he does what he can for that family. Um, there, when he was in the military, there's something he told me and it stuck with me ever since he said this. He said, if I want to settle down in one place and start a family, I have to leave the service. And that's exactly what he did. And when he says something like that and leaves something big that he's put so much time and commitment into, he's going to do what he can to make it work. And, you know, I've, I've just witnessed everything he does for Megan and that family. And for him to come back and say, like, I feel like I'm never doing enough or she makes it seem like I need to do more. And he's just tired. Like it, it, I, yeah, I've. Have, have you observed your nephews with their mom? I have. And, and what's that relationship like? It's, it's good. Okay. Um, she takes care of the children too. Yes. Um, there were, um, some, um, Gatherings. My house was made. Um, I host a lot of the family gatherings, Christmases, um, New Year's, and I am very confident when I say that Jake is the primary caregiver at those gatherings. Um, from the minute they arrive at my house, um, Jake is the one to have his arms full of diaper bags, the gift bags, food. He goes back out to the car. He carries the boys in. He takes off their shoes. He takes off their coats. It's dinner time. He makes their plate of food. He sets them down at the table. He gets them eating. He offers to make Megan's plate of food. Sometimes he does. Sometimes he doesn't, but he offers. He does all of that before he even helps himself to a plate of food. Half the time he eats standing up at my counter because he has to go back and forth to help the boys stay seated down to keep eating. After we eat dinner, then they need diaper changes. He's always the one to change a diaper. Um, and their entire relationship, however long that was, three years, whatever, I have probably have witnessed Megan change two diapers, maybe two. Um, and then. Did Jake ever do anything with the car, at, you know, when they were getting yep. ready to leave? Yep. So um, after all the festivities are wrapped up, so it's Christmas, Jake's packing all the toys into the bags. He's loading the car up with all of these bags. He's getting their coats and shoes back on as he's loading the bags in the car. He's turning the car on to make sure it's warm for him. He's scraping off the snow if it's winter. If it's summer, he's turning on the car to cool it down. He loads up the car, loads up the bags, the kids, everything. And um, Megan will be like sitting at the bar stool talking to us while he's doing all of this. And was Megan friendly to you? Yeah. And, and to the family? Yes. W was she also help helpful with the kids? Not as much. Um, there'd be even times where, and not just even at my house, but even out and about where um, any of the three boys would say, mom, can I have this? Or mom, can I go do this? Or mom, I'm going to object as to hear say anything that the children are saying. Just saying. Uh, Ma'am, you, you can't say what somebody okay. else says. Okay? I, I understand. Okay, sorry. Right, and 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 we we can move on. Um, okay. Have Have you seen uh, so your nephew Sam is two? Yes. And do you know if he's still nursing? Not that I'm aware. Okay. Have I, you seen Have you seen him eat solid food? Yes. Yes. He's been eating solid foods for, for quite some time. And is is he a good eater? Yes, absolutely. He's one of the best eaters out of the four grandkids. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> What have you seen with regard to what your brother provides in terms of material things for, for his children? Yeah, so um, he is always the one, like we'll go out to dinners. He's always the one to pay the bill. Um, when we're on vacations, he takes them in gift shops and he buys them souvenirs. Um, and that's no one included. 
Um, we are in Mackinac City. And just to clarify, because I don't, I don't think we've had a lot of testimony. Who is Noah? Noah is Megan's son. Okay. And, and not a son of the parties. Right. Just, yes. And do you know approximately how old Noah is? Um, nine or ten. Okay. okay. So, I'm sorry, you're saying um, your, your brother uh, purchases things for yes. Noah as well? Yes. Yes. Um, we've gone to events and sporting events. He purchases the tickets. Um, I, again, in all of their relationship, I honestly can remember maybe one time where I've even seen Megan carry a purse or a wallet. Um, Jake is 100% witness. I've witnessed him be the financial provider in the house for them and their family. Do, when the children are, are with your brother, do they have appropriate clothing? Yes. Do yes. they have, um, coats, shoes, boots? Yes, they have all of that. Do they, um... Can you, can you describe what their bedrooms are like? Their bedrooms are so special um, to them. They are very nice. Jake included them in the remodel. The boys got to pick out their paint and their themes. So each room has a theme. They, each boy has their own bed. They have Lego tables. They have Play-Doh tables. They have little kitchen play sets. They're, they're, they love it. It's a, it's a perfect room for little kids. Do you, you said you spend holidays uh, with your brother. Do you, I do. Do you recall... a? Uh, Christmas in 2023? I do. And what what did what did you see your brother do for the kids for Christmas? Jake brought up all the Christmas traditions that we grow up with. All the fun little um you know, hanging the stockings and decorating the Christmas tree and just making it a joyous Christmas. When, yes, was, and- when was the last birthday celebration you attended for one of the kids? If I could, I'd like to talk about the last birthday for each of them since they both had recent birthdays. But um, yeah, so Jake planned a very special, extravagant birthday for Asher. Um, We went to a water park and spent the weekend there. Asher loves the water park. Um, Jake planned everything. Um, We did the arcade. We did the water park. We went back to the hotel room where Asher was surprised with a room full of decorations and Spider-Man theme, his favorite. We had cupcakes. We had gifts. We even played a little game. Um, and then the next day we went to the, um, Grand Rapids Children's Museum. It was just all well thought out and planned and all the kids had a great time. And then Sam's birthday, um, we held, had at Jake's house. And again, Jake had a Mickey Mouse theme party, decorations again, had a a special cake, specially made, personalized for Sam. Everything is, like I said, he's just so thoughtful and he put together two really great special days that those boys had fun at. During any of these celebrations, did you see your brother drink? No. And ha- have you seen him drink at any family gatherings in, in the last six months? No. Um, in the last year? No. Do you, can you remember the last time that he, he had alcohol when, when he had the children? Um, probably the summer before that, so 2022 on the boat, and Megan was present. And when when he would... Was, was that a regular thing to go on, on the boat or was that a one-time thing? Uh, we No, it wasn't one time. We live on the lake, so we spend our, a lot of the summertime on the lake. So in, 20, in 2022, were, you, were, were Jake and Megan and the kids spending a lot of time with, with your family on the boat? Yes. And did, did, did you see either or both of them drinking during 2022? There were days where both of them would and there were days maybe Jake would only have one or two. And when they... What what was the common amount of alcohol that each of them would have? What was the average? Two, no more than three in a full day um, on the boat. Did you ever see e- either of them um, intoxicated to the point that you thought they were unable to care for the kids? No. Uh, did Jake ever drive the boat? Um, occasionally, but not not frequently. Okay. W- was he ever... Did you ever see him at a point where you thought maybe he, he was drinking too much to drive the boat? No, no. Did e- you ever see either of them drink to the point where you thought they, they, they shouldn't drive the kids home? No. Did you ever observe them having any arguments about the amount of alcohol uh, that was being consumed by either of them? Um, no, they're very vaguely. I remember maybe Megan had questioned him one day about how many of those are you going to drink? And he replied, this is my second. And it was the second because, yeah. 
Do you um have you have you ever been concerned about your brother's consumption of alcohol? No, I not. I have not. Are you aware of any disagreements your brother and your mom might have had about about alcohol? No. No. Do you have any concerns about the children's care when they're with your brother? Absolutely not. Have you have you had the opportunity to see your brother with the kids for an extended period of time? You mentioned that there was a weekend. Have you spent more than a weekend with your brother and his kids? I don't know. I haven't really been given the opportunity because, I mean, he doesn't have them for that long. So. And and when when you were with him for that weekend, uh, did, he, mm -hmm. did he change Asher's diaper? Yes. Did he did he give up any of his parenting responsibilities to you or to your mom or to anyone else? No, there was even a night we were hanging out in the hotel room and Jake had pulled the boys aside to make sure they had a bath before um, it was bedtime. I have no further questions. Okay. Okay. Ms. Pace, now I need to cross. Thank you, Ms. Ryder. You were just asked if you've witnessed your brother change Asher's diaper. How old is Asher? Asher is four. Right. And he's still in a diaper? Um, rarely. During his birthday weekend, um, he was. But um, recently, I don't think he is wearing diapers anymore. Okay. When's the last time you saw Asher? Um, the last weekend he that he was with Jake. Do you see the boys every weekend that Jake has the boys? Nine out of ten times, yes. And you guys all spend time as a family? You, your yes. mom, Jake, every weekend that he has the boys? Yep. And you guys go to all the events that the children have those at those times as well? Do, oh, rephrase it. do you go to soccer? I do not. My okay. um, daughter has other obligations that same night, so it's hard for me to make those Wednesdays. Okay. You said Asher, when was Asher's birthday party? Um, January, it was the weekend just before his birthday. His birthday, I believe, was on a Monday and it was the weekend before. Okay. When is Asher's birthday? January um, 29th. So it was the weekend prior to January 29th? Yes. When's Samuel's birthday? March 4th? I'm, I'm not... I, and when was Ash or Samuel's party? That same week of his birthday, the the weekend that Jake had had the boys. Okay. Do you mm -hmm. know if Jake had either boy for the time on their actual birthday? He did. Do you know how how much time he had with the boys on that those days? Um, three hours. Are you guessing at three hours, or are you think he had three hours? I I was pretty sure it was between two to three hours. Okay. All right. You were talking about an incident of in the summer of 2022 that you guys were all on the boat and the children were there. Um, mm -hmm. Was that the same incident that you said Megan asked Jake, um, how many of those are you going to have? I can't be certain that was the same incident. There was too many. We, we spent too much time on the boat. I don't know. Okay. Was there a time on the boat in summer of 2022 where Jacob had too much to drink and he passed out on your mother's couch? Not that I can recall. Okay. Do you recall a conversation with Megan about Jake passing out at your mother's house on the couch? I don't. Do you know Jake's Jacob's work schedule? As far as Monday through Friday, early to four o'clock. Like I, I is that answer? Okay. Do you know how much over is he required to work overtime ever? He does work overtime. I'm not certain if it's required. Okay. Since um August of or October of 2023, have you been present at any of the exchanges where the children have gone from mom to dad? No. Now, you indicated that Jake has clothing at his house. Do you know who purchased that clothing? It's a mix between himself, myself, and my mom. So you and your mom also help? Absolutely. Pay for the clothing. Okay. Now, you indicated that Jake pays for everything. He always paid the bill. He paid for souvenirs. Do you know if Jake paid any rent while living with Megan? He did. Do you know how much? I'm not certain. 
Do you know if he I, paid for utilities or anything else there? Um, my impression was he was, yes, he did actually. Yes. Every month. Um, the consumers was in his name. I remember a conversation with him about that. And you said you don't remember how much he paid in rent. I, I don't know. I no, you through your testimony made it sound like Megan kind of wasn't involved at these family function. Is that fair of what you were trying to indicate? I'm trying to indicate that at the family functions, I'm confident saying Jake is the primary caregiver where he does a majority of the parenting. At those family functions, do you know who prior to arriving got the bags ready to be brought over to your house? I know. No, I don't. Okay. And you don't know who prepared the food either that would be coming along, do you? Um, I don't. Okay. Um, and do you know who wrapped the presents who when they came over? Um, my brother did comment one year um, that he had wrapped the presents because um, we were teasing about something with the wrapping and he he is a humorous guy and he was joking. And so I knew that he had done that. Okay. So that one occasion you knew he did out of all For the Christmas. other things. Okay. Yeah. Like, yeah. Okay. Now, in regards to those um, family events, do you, Megan breastfed both children, is that correct? Yes. So at those events, there were times when she was breastfeeding, she was also trying to eat, and she was trying to do other things. Is that fair to say? I cannot remember the last time I've seen Megan breastfeed, though. Okay. Do, you recall, do you recall prior to October of 2023, but within the last two years that she's actually asked for help? Like, hey, Jake, can you help me out here for a second? I got a kid in my arm, I'm breastfeeding, and I'm trying to do something else. I mean, I can't say that she said that. I, I don't know. How often were you stopping over at Megan Jacobs' house? Not often. Like you, how far do you live from Megan's house? Walking distance. Two, streets, a, two streets over. Yes, okay. I would say less than a mile. Okay. Was it more often that Jake would stop by your house or you would stop by Megan's house? Um, he would stop by mine. Okay. So because you, it wasn't very often you were within their home, you really don't know except for a couple occasions what their life really was like. Is that fair to say? I haven't witnessed what their life was like. Um, I just know from my brother's phone calls and in-person conversations with his events and, and telling me the things that were happening. So it was his perception of what was going on, sure. correct? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Did you ever talk to Megan about what life was like with them or complaints that your brother was indicating? No, I wasn't comfortable with that. Okay. Prior to October of 2023, how often were you seeing Jake, Jacob and the boys together? Um, anytime our family got together. Um, several times a month. Um, I felt like things were pretty difficult to plan with them um, and get together. So it was more for an occasion, a celebration. Um, and, you know, acknowledging something that was going on in somebody's life, <laughs> birthday, so holiday. So it wasn't, except for the summer of 22, we were talking, you guys were on the boats, but it was all the time. When you were talking about we, was that you, Megan, and Jacob, or was it you and your family? Me and my family planning with Megan and Jacob. Okay. Now, you said it was difficult to plan to get together with Megan and Jacob prior to their separation? Yeah, because just from conversations, it's, they... I don't want this to be here's I'm trying to figure out um Jake had to go through Megan a lot to okay things and approve of things so although Jacob was on board and wanted to do this or wanted to go to grandma's he always had to wait for Megan's confirmation and make sure she didn't have plans that he may have not known about or maybe she didn't want to come or whatever the deal was at home but it, it just it made things difficult so that's why you saw them on fewer occasions yes I have no further questions for this witness. Ms. McNiff, any uh, redirect? Um, sure. You you indicated that you and your mom uh, buy some clothes for your brother's mm -hmm. kids. Is that because he can't afford them or doesn't have them or because you just enjoy gifting clothes to them? 
because I'm a shopper and I enjoy gifting clothes. I work in liquidation and get good deals. And I always have my nephews at the forefront of my shopping habits. Um, why, why weren't you comfortable talking to Megan about what was going on with her and your brother? I didn't want to cause any more con conflict between the two of them because I know how difficult she was to work with. And I felt like I was walking on a lot of eggshells. And so I, I never really pushed any topic. I kind of like Jake, I think does kind of, we do what we can to keep things civil, happy and smooth sailing. Cause really anyone in the family, my family doesn't like conflict. We're not good with it. We don't want it. We want everyone to be happy. So we walk on eggshells to make sure that happens and that we're still able to get together for family functions because that's important to us. Did, did Megan ever come to you and express concerns about your brother's drinking? No. Did your brother ever express concerns to you about problems that, that he was having in his relationship with Megan? Yeah, we had. Yeah, that's why he would stop by the house or shoot a phone call or we'd go out to dinner and just talk it about because, I mean, he was stressed and that helps him. Re you know, he needed reason. Like, what more can I do? I, I do it all and it's still never enough. What did he tell you? What kinds of things they, they would argue about? Money. Was that the primary issue? From my perspective, yes. I, that was that's what kicked off this the the separation. From my understanding, um, Jake was asking for help, not real help, or more of a partnership with with rent and the bills, and she did not like that. And that's what sparked all of this. Did he ever say that they argued about um, who was providing more care for the children? That that were there disagreements about that? from what he told you? He would just tell me that, you know, he has, there was a day he went to the laundromat, washed all the comforters and the sheets. He came home, he vacuumed and did the dishes. And she would get upset about little things like not cleaning off the, the um, tray on the high chair, or he didn't dry out the sink after doing dishes. So there's water spots in the sink. So yeah. he would try and help and do all these things, but she would just turn it back around on him that it was never enough and she wasn't happy or thankful. Were those the primary uh, issues of disagreement that he talked to you about? Yes, the ones that stick very vividly with me. Mm -hmm. Did you, um, did your mom ever take care of, of your children? Yes. Yep. Would you ever see uh, Jake and his children when you were all picking up kids from your mom's? Yes. Several times a week, we would arrive at the same time to pick up the kids. And w would you ever like stay in and in, in chat and let the kids play together? Yes. Yeah. And how, how, how often would that happen? Again, several times a week. Um, say we'd get there maybe four ish. And then by five o'clock, we would be wrapping up and heading home. So half hour, 45 minutes. I have no further questions. Ms. Page, now any uh, recross? I have a couple recross. Miss Ryder, when were mm -hmm. you guys? picking up the kids from your mom from after work, if you were, has been a stay at home mom. I hadn't quit my job by then. Um, I left Bronson when my daughter was 10 months old, 11, yeah, 10 or 11 months old. So I just want to clarify this. In these incidents you were talking about are several years ago. These exchanges. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And did Jake ever tell you that Megan was, I'll use the word complaining that she wanted him to be home more. I, I I don't re recall that, no. Are you aware that your brother stopped paying rent at the house in December of 2022? I vaguely do remember that. Um, I, I forget the reason in the conversation that they had behind that, but I know there was one. <laughs> but that could have raised conflict between the two of them as well, correct? Yeah, I think money was the, a big factor in this in this relationship. Okay. And you said that Megan is extremely difficult to work with, but I'm confused because you indicate you don't have much conversation with Megan. Is that fair? Not outside. It's not like I would call Megan and talk to her. We wouldn't text outside of gatherings. We wouldn't go shop a day shopping or we wouldn't go get our nails done. We never did any of that. I, so, the, it's, so anything that you pertain to her being difficult came from Jake? 
or Fake description. No, or witnessing in in our gatherings. How would she be difficult at the gatherings? She so okay, so we are at her house for that um, baptismal gathering breakfast thing. Um, Jake was packing up bags, getting things around so we could head to the church for the event. Um, and he was doing all that. Megan had come, um, hollered, so to say, not, not screamed loud or anything, but hollered across all the conversations. Do the boys have dry britches? Check the, check the, do they have dry britches? It's like, he's already doing things and she wants him to do something else on top of that. Were the boys near him? No, they were with, they were with family members talking and around the house. How long ago was this? I, whenever, I'm not sure when the boys were baptized exactly a date. Two years ago? Three years ago? Well, Sam is only two, so that had to have been, what, he was baptized at one-ish? When he was one? Mm -hmm. So her asking Jake to check their britches is making Megan to be being difficult, correct? That was just a, a situation where I witnessed why why did Jake have to do something else in addition to what he was already doing to get ready when there I mean she was just conversing with family. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Okay. Ryder, thank you for your testimony. Uh you're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. Oh, but wait a minute, but we need Adam oh. Ryder. So oh, I'm, I'm okay. done with the kids and okay. people come up. Okay. Uh, you're free to go, but we'll get him, okay? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Lisa, he's actually signed in in a, in a different device. Oh, he is? Okay. Yes. Uh, can we take a, Adam? Can we, yeah, Adam can, but can we take a quick bathroom break? Okay, we'll take another break. Sorry, uh, Your Honor. All right, we'll pause for a moment here. Thank you. Go ahead, Ms. McNiff. Thank you. Mr. Ryder, do you live in Battle Creek? I do. And do you work? Yes. Where do you work? Uh, Consumers Energy. And you're married to Brittany Ryder? Yes. And how long have you known Jacob Smith? Uh, 15 years plus, I guess. You're his brother-in-law? Yes. And what kind of relationship do you have with him? Uh, we've got a good relationship. Uh, see each other once a week at least, I guess, if not every other week. Okay. And what, what kind of a person is, is Jacob? Uh, family man. He'd do anything for his kids. He's a um, hard worker. He's loyal to everybody. He'd uh, drop everything to do anything that you need. And you have children? I do. And what, what is Jacob like with your children? Uh, he's very good. He's uh, He'll get down there and play with them. Um, the, our kids play very well together. So they're always wanting to be next to each other. So if we're out to dinner, Jake's sometimes or most of the time gets stuck with both of them because they want to sit next to each other. Um, but yeah, he's always willing to help out. When you say gets tough with them, what does he do? Stuck with them. Oh, stuck with them. Gotcha. Uh, do you trust him with your kids? Of course. Uh, would, would, do you have any issues with him taking care of your children when you and your wife aren't able to? Um, we're uh, pretty protective uh, parents, and uh, he's actually about the only one other than our parents that has actually watched the kids. And does he ever watch all the kids together? Um, he has my daughter, but not my son. How, how does he do when all the children are together? Very good. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't have a problem with him being with them anytime. Uh, the kids, you know, they do run around and play, but. He's very good with them. Have you ever seen him have having to correct any of the children? I mean, they are three. So, we, you know, going up and down the stairs and jumping off furniture they're not supposed to. You know, it's, uh, you know, do you have to tell them no once in a while? And how, how does he handle that? Uh, very well. I would, you know, I have no problem with him, you know, telling my daughter no um, because she's doing not, something she's not supposed to be doing. What kinds of things have you seen him do with his kids? Um, everything. Plays with them. He's uh, fishes with them. We play in the water, um, playing sports, uh, out in his front yard, hitting the ball. You know, we're uh, active, active people, so he's out playing with them all the time. Have you seen him change diapers? Yes, all the time. Uh, prepare food for the kids? Yes, all the time. And have when when Jacob and Ms. Wenzel were together, did, did you often see them together? Yes. And what did you observe about Ms. Wenzel and the children? I'd say most of the time when we were together, it was Jake that was taking care of the kids, whether it was getting them their food, getting them to the table, changing diapers, um, bringing the toys, things like that. Okay. And, I mean, did you see Ms. Wenzel changing diapers and getting the kids food? Um, not usually, no. Did you ever go boating with, uh, with Jacob and, and Megan? Yes. And did they take the children? Yes. 
And like, who would get life jackets, life preservers on, on the kids? Um, it'd be mostly Jake or uh, um, mother-in-law. Did you ever see Jacob tubing with Noah? Yes. And did he did he take care of Noah in the same way that he took care of uh, his children? Of course. He, he acted like he was one of his own. Do you ever recall a time being out on a boat uh, with the parties and Noah when um, when Jacob was not drinking alcohol? Was not not drinking alcohol. I'd say okay. most wasn't drinking alcohol. Okay. Do you ever recall? Was there ever a time when when you gave him a, a, a taste of your drink? Yeah, I think uh, I'd say if, I've always let's see. It was one of those specialty beers that came out um, a couple of years ago. Now it was peach beers, I believe, and uh, offered to everybody to try it. When when they would come and and go boating, who would generally like carry the coolers and the equipment to the boat? That'd be Jake. He'd carry ninety percent of everything. And who would generally pack it back up? Uh, Jake. And you said you you didn't see Jake drinking that much when you'd be out on the boat. No, not with the, not with his kids in the last couple of years. He hasn't drank much. Okay. And what about Megan? Did you see her drink when when you were out boating? Uh, once in a while. Okay. But uh, uh, similar to Jacob. Yeah. Did you ever have any concerns about about either of them um, having too much to drink? No, we're we're all with the family. Nobody's drinking too much. Is that the same with you and your wife? Right. My uh, my wife hasn't drank much in less, since we've had kids either. So, okay. Ha have you ever seen Jacob um, starting the car when it's hot out to cool it down before the kids and Megan got in? Every time. Have you ever seen him when it's cold out at a family event, starting it, it, it up to get it warm for the kids and, and Megan? Yeah, every time. Uh, other than boating, have you ever observed the parties drinking alcohol together? Um, maybe when we're out to dinner, have a, have a drink. Most of the time, Jake went. Uh, once in a while, Megan would have one. Okay. Do you ever go golfing with Jake? Yes. And do you, are, are you familiar with his golf bag? Yes. Can you describe it? Uh, it's a white, white and blue and red. I think most of it, but it's an Adams golf bag. And have you ever seen Jake um, keep alcohol in the golf bag? No. Have you ever seen him uh, drinking when, when when you go golfing? Uh, the last year or so, no. But in the past, we've had a couple beers. So when when you would go golfing, would would either of you ever buy a six pack? Yeah, I'd say usually we'd buy the six pack and split it. And would would you generally each drink three beers or or? Uh, sometimes it'd vary um, depending on who was driving. They might not they might have not have their third one. And and how long would you be out on the golf course? Uh, usually they're outing, so it was four four or five hours. Okay. What what's the most that you can remember seeing him drink at the golf course? I'd say usually it's those the split in the beers, so you know three four maybe. Were you ever worried? after you were done golfing that he was uh too intoxicated to drive no you usually the whoever was i want to say more intoxicated but i guess i if if he was driving he wasn't intoxicated and and same with me when if i was driving are um are is is jacob conscientious about controlling how much he drinks if he knows he's going to be driving yeah i'd say so i mean in the last couple of years he hasn't drank much at all and have you had the opportunity to spend time with Jake recently uh, for the boys' birthday parties? Yes. And what did you do for Asher's birthday? Uh, we went to a water park up north of Muskegon. And who organized that weekend? Uh, Jake did. Did you observe Jacob taking care of the boys that weekend? Yes. And what, what did he do for them? Uh, everything. Um, when, when we went to the water park, he was playing with the kids, um, went to the arcade, um, getting them food, um, changing diapers, putting their swimsuits on. Um, it was a smaller place, so it was a little harder to put their clothes on. So, but he he was in there doing both of them at the same time. And was he drinking that weekend? No. And did you go to Sam's birthday party? Um, I believe so. I okay. Do you remember? Do you um, do you recall anything about it? If you don't, that's okay. Uh, I I don't. Okay. Um, do you have any concerns about about the children's care when they're in their father's uh, custody? No, not at all. Do you think that he handles them on alternating weekends when you've seen him with them? Oh, yeah, definitely. 
has Jacob ever confided in you regarding any disagreements or conflicts he's had with Megan? I'm sure we've talked a little bit on the golf course, but I wouldn't be able to recall what the conversations were. I have no further questions. Okay. Ms. Page, now I'll cross-examination. Thank you. Mr. Ryder, um, these boat trips that you guys are on, yep. Megan was there as well, you indicated? Uh, not this past year, I don't believe, but before that, yes. Okay. So this past year when Jake or his mom was getting the children ready, it's because Megan wasn't there, correct? Correct. Okay. Same with this birthday weekend that dad planned um, for, at the water park. Megan wasn't present to help out as well, was she? No. Okay. So who else would have been there to take care of the kids if Jake's a single pa parent for the weekend? Uh, me and my wife, his mom, his dad. Okay. At no time, none of you stepped in to help out with anything during that weekend? I'm sure we played with him and things like that, but for the most part, he did everything with his, his with his kids. Okay, which is pretty typical when, when you're at a family event. You take care of your own kids and help out other kids when necessary, correct? Yep. All right, so pretty typical. Correct? Yes. Okay, now you indicated that Jake would carry a cooler out on the boat, is that correct? Yes. Okay, and that would be his cooler? It was their cooler. They had their snacks and kids' drinks. Okay, and their drinks if they were choosing to drink that day? Uh, I meant more of like the kids' drinks. But water, okay. juice. Was there a different cooler for the alcohol that would go out on the boat? I don't believe so. Okay. Is there, at your family functions, when you guys get all together that you described, is there alcohol there? Uh, yes, occasionally, I guess. Okay. Do you recall seeing Megan at Sam's Club in December of 2023? Um, I don't know when it was, but I have seen her at Sam's Club. Okay, and she had the children with her? Yes, I believe so. Did your daughter recognize Asher? She she did once we got past him a little ways away. Okay, but when they were talking to her, your daughter didn't know who he was, did she? Did talk to him. Uh, all it was was me saying hi to her. Okay, but your daughter didn't recognize Asher, correct? No, she wasn't paying attention. Okay. And were you there preparing for your Christmas par family Christmas party? I don't recall. Okay. Were you buying a gallon of Captain Morgan? No. Were you buying any alcohol that day? I... Not sure. Okay. And these events like Jake fishing with the kids, was that in the summer of 2023? Um, I'd say both times. Unless since he's had kids, we've always, you know, had the kids out to the lake. Okay. I'm, I'm just talking specifically the fishing. Um, I know for sure uh, 2023, yes. Okay. How about playing ball in the front yard? Is that new you saw in the summer of 2023 or fall of 2023? No, that was at Megan's house. In 2023? No, that would have been the year before. How often were you at Megan's house? Um, occasionally, not very often. Do you get along with Megan? Yes, I think so. Okay. Miss Winslow is actually taking care of your children, is that correct? Um, that I, I mean, they kids have played together. Did, didn't she babysit the kids once so you guys could all go to a concert? Um, with, with Jake, yes. Jake was with you at the concert or Jake was home with Megan? Jake was with the kids. She's never had them alone? I do not believe so. Do you recall an incident, a family event in the last two years that Miss Winslow was um, breastfeeding or holding one of the babies trying to eat at the same time? Um, I'm sure on the boat, yes. Okay. Or do you recall anything at the house? At your house? Um, I don't. Do you recall asking her if you could take the baby from her so she could eat? I, I don't recall, but if I was trying to help out, maybe, yes. Okay. If you were trying to help out Megan, you would do that? Yes. Okay. I have no further questions. Okay. Ms. McNiff, any uh, redirect? No. Okay. Mr. Ryder, thank you for your testimony. You're free to go. Have a good day, sir. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Your Honor, I have, um, I have two witnesses left. One is my client. Um. I don't know. Do we have Lisa Smith in the in the waiting room? I I, I thought this was going to go a little bit slower. So, yes, we do have Miss Smith in the waiting room. I'm happy to start her if the court wants to do that. Yeah, I have that. How how long do you think that she will be? Testing? She'll be she'll be a little bit longer than the, than these other witnesses, but she shouldn't be crazy long. Well, except except I do have quite a few questions for her, so she might be a little longer than what you think. Okay. <laughs> Why don't we do this? Why don't we? Uh, Take a break now for lunch, and uh, we can resume at 1 o'clock. Great. Okay.
Thank you. All right. Thank you.